Hi everyone, my name is Henry. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about a selling carbide MOSFET multi chain module for high temperature and high frequency applications. The phase like module has the rating of 1200 volt and 60 amp. To get to this current, in each switch position, we parallel 320 amp selling carbide MOSFETs and 310 amp selling carbide shock cutouts. The main features of this module include the Kelvin type gate connection to minimize the common source inductances, low package parasitic impedances, high temperature operation with the device maximum junction temperature pushed up to 200 degrees Celsius, and high frequency operation with a nominal switching frequency of 70 kHz. The module is still in the very basic wire bond structure. All packaging materials are capable of working temperatures over 250 degrees Celsius. The module consists of the aluminum nitride direct bonded copper substrate, the aluminum bonding wire, electroless plated nickel boron surface on the substrate, high temperature thin layer solder for the die attachment via vacuum reflow process, and high temperature silicone material as the module encapsulant. The whole module is finally attached to the aluminum heatsink with thermally conductive adhesive. The module also adopts and improves the substrate layout design to minimize the effect of package parasitics. In traditional phase like modules, the MOSFETs are usually placed right next to their anti-parallel dials. This kind of layout is commonly seen in a lot of commercial modules. This design is simple and straightforward, but may not result in the best switching performance. The reason is that, in the hard switching process, the current commutation actually happens between the MOSFETs and their floating dials. Therefore, the loop formed by this switch pair and the DC buses will see the highest DIDT during both turn-on and turn-off. It is this loop inductance that causes trouble during switching. Minimizing this loop inductance will be most effective in reducing the parasitic raining during switching. Based on this concept, an improved layout design was adopted, where the switch pair devices are placed very close to each other. In this way, the switching loop inductance can be more easily optimized. Because of this rearrangement, the substrate pattern will be more complicated, which results in 15% larger footprint if following the same design criteria. But the new design is still able to achieve 15 to 30% lower inductances, and accordingly, 25% lower voltage overshoot at turnoff. Okay, so this is a prototype module we fabricated in our packaging lab. And regarding the substrate layout, you can see that here are three the top MOSFETs, and right next to them are three bottom dials. And in this way, we can easily uh, minimize the switching loop inductance. And likewise, on the other half of the module, you can see these are the top uh, dials, and these are the bottom MOSFETs. And uh, on this side of the module, we can see this is a, a bus bar, DC bus bar, in a laminated structure. And this is also for the purpose of reducing the switching loop inductance. And uh, on the bottom left corner, you can see this is a, a thermistor we use to measure the module temperature. And the entire module is then encapsulated in this uh, silicon material. This is to provide electrical isolation and uh, chemical and mechanical support for the module. And then the module is uh, mounted on an aluminum heatsink. This is a test bed we use to test the performance of the module. On the left, is a high temperature phase like driver using the uh, silicon on insulator or SOI technology. The driver is also capable of operation above 200 degrees C so that we can have a fully high temperature power stage in the final converter system. On the right hand side, you can see this is a power module. For this particular module, we didn't use the uh, silicon encapsulation. Instead, we coated the module surface using a thin layer of black color dielectric paint to increase the emissivity of the surface so that uh, during the test, we can measure the device temperatures using a thermal camera. To verify the high temperature operation of the module, we operated the module continuously in the buck topology. The experiment was done in the room environment, while the sodium carbon MOSFETs were heated by their own losses. The left picture shows the test waveforms of the module running at 100 kHz and 200 degrees Celsius. On the right is the thermal map of the module under this condition. We can see all three top MOSFETs have surface temperatures over 190 degrees Celsius, and the middle device has the highest temperature at 201 degrees. The junction temperature will be even higher than what was measured. During the test, no thermal runaway phenomena was observed, and the converter efficiency just decreased slightly at higher junction temperatures. This verifies the high temperature and high frequency operation of the module.